In this lesson, we will learn how to animate the camera in our Rhino project on a path based on existing camera views. We can accomplish this using Grasshopper and the new V-Ray Timeline component in V-Ray Next, which you'll see gives you even more fine-tuned control over rendering camera animations. Let's first take a look at the Named Views tab, where you'll see that we have several existing camera views set up, Render Cameras 1, 2, and 3. Now, Let's examine the Grasshopper definition here to see how we can create a path from the pre-existing views in Rhino and then animate the camera along this path. First, let's start by selecting Render Camera 01 as our main view, then right-clicking on the V-Ray Camera 01 node and selecting Get from Rhino Viewport. This will get the camera target and position points of the current Rhino view. Next, we are going to use these points to interpolate two separate curves through them, one for the position of the camera and one for the target. To do so, we first need to right-click on the V-Ray Camera 01 node's position input and select Extract Parameter. Then, let's do the same thing for the target input. Now, simply connect the newly created Position Point node to the D1 input of the Merge node named Positions. Then, do the same for the target point by connecting it to the target's Merge node. And as you can see, the rest of the points for the other V-Ray cameras have already been created and connected the same way to their respective inputs. I've directed the target and position points of Render Camera 2 to the D2 inputs of the corresponding merge components and the points of Render Camera 3 to go to the D3 inputs. Keep in mind that for this specific definition, the order of the connected target and position points is important. You should connect the position or target point in the number slot corresponding to the order of the camera perspectives that you want your animation to iterate through. That said, if you want the animation to follow a different camera path, you could rearrange these inputs. Okay, now that we have the position and target points for the selected cameras, we can use the Interpolate Curve Through Points node. We already have two of these set up to create two curves that we can later use as paths for animating the camera's position and target. Next, you will see the Divide and List Item components, which are used in conjunction with the new V-Ray Timeline component to animate the position and target points of the camera on the curves based on the timeline's frame output. Now, before sending the camera animation for rendering in Rhino, make sure that you have connected the timeline output to the V-Ray Render component's timeline input. Then, simply create a V-Ray Render and Project component from the Render group of the V-Ray tab and connect it to the Render node. Now, we can right-click to select the Export Camera Animation option. Let's wait a couple of seconds for the animation to be exported. Okay, let's now go to the Asset Editor and turn off Interactive Rendering so that we're rendering for production. Then, go to the Render Output drop-down menu and toggle on the Save Image option. Let's also make sure to select a path and file extension for the animation. In this case, I'll call this Exterior Camera Animation and select the JPEG format. Again, make sure not to forget this important step. Otherwise, if a directory is not specified in advance to save the frames, you will have to render them all over again. Also, let's turn on the Animation toggle and select the Frame Range Time Segment, then click on the Get Animation Range button to get all the frames from the V-Ray Timeline node in Grasshopper. Okay. Now we're ready to render the whole animation. Since this is going to take a few hours to render with these settings and resolution, I'm going to hit stop and show you the already rendered animation. Okay, now you've seen how using V-Ray Next, you can animate a camera on a path based on existing camera views with the new V-Ray Timeline component in Grasshopper.